the fundamentals of how we look after our teeth doesn't change too much, no matter where we are in the world. But the systems and dental care networks we rely upon can vary quite a bit. As a Brit living in the UK, there is a perception that the majority of Americans have great teeth and that their dental care is amongst the best in the world. Whereas it would seem the US has the opposite opinion of those of us in the UK. In order to better understand American dentistry, who better to ask than practicing dental hygienist Christina from the YouTube channel Ask a Hygienist. I asked her some questions and she shares some fantastic insights for those of us less familiar with American dental care. So to kick things off, Christina, can you give an overview of how the American dental system works? So I would say the American dental system is heavily based on insurance. So whether or not you have insurance and or what type of insurance you have is going to dictate what kind of dental office you're going to go to. That being said, there are three different types of dental offices in America. There's chain dentistry or franchise operated dental offices. There's private practices and there's government funded community type clinics. So with chain dentistry, they're more readily available. They're open longer hours or even on the weekends. So people don't have to miss work if they don't want to or if they can't miss work. Uh, so it's a little bit more convenient and the price tends to be maybe a little bit lower, not by much, uh, compared to private practices. The big downside to franchise type uh, dental offices is the dental professionals that work there don't really have ownership of the practice. Their name isn't really on the line. So generally speaking, the quality of work reflects that. Now, I'm not trying to put a bad name to all the dentists who work at um, chain type dental offices, but the truth is you don't really have a lot of say in how things are ran. You know, you kind of come in and sometimes the instruments aren't that great or the technology isn't, you know, up to date or whatever. So you kind of work with what you have and most of the time it ends up being not as high of a quality care that you might get at a private office. The way private dental offices work is they are owned by the dentists who work there. So again, a little bit more of that ownership. Uh, the dentist's name is on the line, you know, their reputation is up for everyone to see. Uh, Americans love to leave reviews, good and bad. So, you know, if you don't do great work, it's going to show up in reviews and then your office kind of goes downhill and nobody wants to go there. Probably the highest quality care you're going to get is at private dental offices. Also tends to be the highest priced for that reason. Not to say there aren't dentists that work at private offices that do really bad work. Those do exist, unfortunately, but that's what reviews are for and word of mouth, etc. Lastly, there's the government funded uh, dental offices. So these are community clinics. These are offered for people who have low income or don't have insurance. Of the three, these are probably the lowest quality care you'll get. And there's definitely no emphasis on cosmetic work. So it's kind of more of an emergency based type of dental care where you go in, you get a filling done. They fill your tooth with the cheapest material that's going to work and make your tooth functional. Veneers and implants are definitely off the table at these types of clinics. Are dental costs really as expensive as many people believe? Unfortunately, the answer is yes. The more I've been working in the field and the more I've been hearing from people who have come from overseas, from other countries, American dental costs are pretty high up there. So I'm just going to throw out some numbers here for reference. A single filling can cost you anywhere from $150 to $300, depending on how many tooth surfaces the filling covers. It's crazy. Now, again, these prices reflect private practices, and I'm giving you the upfront cost, which doesn't include insurance coverage. Insurance would typically cover a large portion of that cost, um, but just to give you guys an idea. So a root canal, for example, could cost around $2,000 for a single tooth, and that doesn't include the crown if it needs a crown on the tooth afterwards. And then a regular cleaning, which includes an exam, checkup x-rays, and, and the actual cleaning portion, could cost around two to three hundred dollars. It depends a little bit on the area that you live in, but that's kind of the ballpark. So as you can see, pretty pricey, but again, insurance is the name of the game. So if you have insurance, a lot of this cost is going to be covered and you end up paying, you know, pennies on the dollar if you have insurance. What options do you have if you don't have insurance? Well, if you don't have insurance, you can obviously go to the government funded type clinics, or even you can apply for government insurance, 
which is uh, an income-based premium. So basically, depending on how much money you make is how much you're gonna be paying for insurance. But again, there's a limited amount of dental offices that accept this type of insurance and it's gonna be reflected in the quality of care, et cetera, et cetera. If you have no insurance and you wanna to go to a private office, you can actually go there and say, hey, I'm paying with cash, can you guys give me a discount? And oftentimes offices prefer not to uh, work with insurance anyway, because they end up losing a chunk of money because they work with the insurance. It's a whole nother story, the way insurances work. But usually if you offer to pay cash, they give you a pretty hefty discount, which is nice. Unfortunately for some, that may still be pretty expensive even with paying cash up front. So the other option, if you have financial challenges, is to actually go to dental schools. And that includes not only dental schools, but actually uh, dental assisting schools and dental hygiene schools as well. All of those have uh, clinics in there that need patients so that they can practice on patients as they're learning new skills. It can be a little bit nerve wracking because you know that the students don't really know what they're doing, but there's obviously instructors overseeing everything that's going on. And my recommendation would be actually to go to a dental hygiene school or a dental assistant school because the doctors there are already established doctors. Uh, whereas if you go to a dental school, the, the doctors are students in training. So, you know, if they're drilling on a tooth, they don't have a lot of practice yet. Um, so if you go that route, I would recommend going to a hygiene or assistant school where the doctors there have some more experience, but that's just my two cents. There's also mobile dental clinics, especially for like kids in public schools. You know, you have a mobile van uh, drive up to the side of the school and take kids out of class one at a time to do fillings or whatever is necessary. So bottom line, there are options for everyone. There's definitely a difference between quality of care within the different types of uh, dental offices available. What would you change about the system given the chance? So first of all, I would personally make it mandatory for oral hygiene to be taught in public schools because unfortunately a lot of people aren't aware of how important oral hygiene is and how easy it is to take care of your teeth and avoid a lot of problems in the future if you just know how to take care of your teeth. And I say, you know, if we raise a new generation where people are more aware of this, we can really tackle the problem at the root. The other thing I would do is get rid of insurance altogether. It's a horrible system. Really the only party that benefits from insurance is the insurance company themselves. The dentists end up having to take a huge uh, cut in their paycheck because when they uh, sign a contract to accept a certain insurance, they actually accept their pricing, which may not be the same as what the dentist wants to charge. So they lose a lot of money. And then of course, um, as a patient, you're paying a premium and then you end up having to pay a little bit more on top of that. Really the only time it makes sense to have insurance is if your work covers it. Cause then at that point it's like, well, I'm not paying for insurance. So whatever, might as well just pay a little deductible to the dentist. But honestly, if we could just get rid of insurance, lower the cost of dentistry. And that kind of ties back to dental school. If dental school wasn't as expensive, you know, as a dental student, you graduate with half a million dollars in student loans. So it makes sense why dentistry is so expensive because you kind of have to pay off those loans. But if dental school was cheaper, if dental costs were cheaper, if we could get rid of insurance, that would be amazing. How often would a typical patient be recommended to get dental cleanings? So usually we recommend coming in twice a year, unless of course you have a history of periodontal disease. Uh, we recommend coming in a little more frequently every three months or every four months. And of course, again, it also depends on what your insurance covers. Some insurances only cover cleanings twice a year. Some insurances cover cleanings indefinitely. You could truly come in every single day if you wanted to. Most people don't want to come in every day to the dentist, so it ends up being, you know, every three to four months they come in if their insurance allows it. So are Americans as obsessed with their teeth as much as media would have us believe? Yes and no. I think because of the Hollywood glamour and celebrities, uh, all that stuff on social media, Americans somehow misunderstand that white teeth and straight teeth 
are healthy teeth. So a lot of people aspire to get that million dollar smile and focus on whitening their teeth and straightening them out. I wish they were as obsessed about flossing as they were about whitening their teeth because unfortunately a lot of Americans, and I assume a lot of the world, really doesn't understand the importance of good oral hygiene, including brushing and flossing. So no, they're not really obsessed about their oral hygiene, but generally speaking, I would say we are a little bit more obsessed as a American culture about how our teeth look in terms of color and straightness and all that stuff. What is a common misunderstanding or falsehood you experience with patients? One of the things I hear very often is people blame genetics for their bad teeth. And I don't want to completely negate genetics as uh, a factor, but oftentimes it's really the patient's poor oral hygiene habits that are causing them to have bad teeth. So for example, you know, a patient comes in and they open their mouth and they're like, yeah, I know I have really bad teeth. It runs in the family. And then I ask them, well, do you floss? You know, and they're like, oh, not really. You know, my gums bleed or whatever. So I don't really floss. So what I start thinking is, well, maybe what runs in your family is bad oral hygiene habits. Again, don't want to negate it, but bottom line, you know, as the saying goes, genetics load the gun, but lifestyle pulls the trigger. If you could share just one piece of dental hygiene advice to every patient, what would it be? There is no cutting corners in oral hygiene. I would just tell people, stop hopping on every single trend you hear, you know, rinse with this and all your dental problems will go away, or start this technique, or take this pill, or use this fancy gadget or whatever. You gotta start with the basics, brushing and flossing, properly, consistently, you know, on a regular basis. And then if you want to start incorporating all that oil pulling and water flossing and taking supplements to change the oral bacteria composition, whatever. But time and again, I get patients who come in and they say, oh yeah, I do this oil pulling stuff. I use my water flosser. I'm trying this herbal concoction, whatever. How are my teeth looking? And I'm like, well, not so great. How's your flossing going? And they're like, not so great. Well, what did you expect? So that's my one piece of advice I would share is there's no cutting corners. Start with the basics and then whatever tickles your fancy, try gadgets and gizmos and trends or hacks or whatever. But no matter what they come up with, nothing replaces brushing and flossing. What has surprised you most about being a hygienist? So personally for me as a hygienist, I would say I am pretty surprised at how much I enjoy talking about teeth. I discovered that I really have a passion for helping patients understand uh, about their oral health and how to take care of their teeth and really seeing uh, them motivated to change their hygiene habits and seeing the results. That's really gratifying to me and I'm kind of surprised at how much I enjoy that. From a patient perspective, I'm very surprised at how clueless people are about their oral health. I know I'm sounding super judgmental, but the things people say sometimes about their teeth makes me like scratch my head or <laughs> try not to giggle. For example, I had a patient once come to me and say, I'd like to get all my teeth shaved off and put crowns on them so that I never have to worry about brushing and flossing or getting a cavity. And I'm like, hmm. I am so excited about your enthusiasm for spending so much money on crowns. But do you know that you're still gonna have to brush and floss your teeth even with crowns? Cause you can get cavities under the crowns and periodontal disease under the gums. So things like that. What toothbrush do you use and why? My current favorite toothbrush is actually a manual toothbrush called the Nimbus toothbrush. I like it because it has very soft and thin bristles that get under the gums really well, which is where your plaque builds up the most, is right along the gum line and underneath the gums. It has a very nice thorough cleaning feeling without feeling super pokey. So that's my go-to. You guys might be surprised that I'm not using an electric toothbrush. Electric toothbrushes definitely have their place and I'm excited to use one when I'm gonna get to the point of you know, not being able to hold a toothbrush very well or whatever, um, but they tend to be a little bit more abrasive. The bristles are a little bit more stiff. So you run the risk of causing recession or toothbrush abrasion on your enamel. So I don't really use an electric toothbrush on a daily basis for those reasons. But when I do use an electric toothbrush, I really like the Oral-B brand just because of the way the toothbrush head is shaped and how it works. It's kind of been my go-to electric toothbrush. John, thanks for having me. Thank you guys all for watching. Take care. Thanks, Christina. I've definitely learned a few things. Do be sure to check out her channel linked here 
and in the video description where she shares a lot of great tips and advice. You'll also be able to see my answers to her questions on the UK dental care system.